Mentions these days are usually a good thing, you know, with social media and all. You hope it's because you're being, you're being acknowledged, acknowledged that is for something good. But what if that mention isn't online, but on the record in a legislative committee meeting? And it isn't for something good you did, but something bad you allegedly didn't do or did do? That's what happened this week with the three Boise County school districts. When Representative Dorothy Moon, their representative in the Idaho House, claimed they were following a curriculum that was, quote, laden with critical race theory, end quote. From infancy to pre-K, she said. Well, those school districts took notice and took offense to those allegations. We broke this down a bit yesterday, sharing their responses, saying none of that was or is happening here. But today, the Basin School District had some more details to share, and they did that in a letter to members of the House Education Committee that they sent out late yesterday. Boise Basin School District isn't the biggest district by any stretch, just 360 students and about 29 teachers. However, they were the only school district in Boise County using funds from an early education federal grant that was discontinued last session because of rampant claims of social justice indoctrination in Idaho schools, none of which was proven. But here we are again. So the Idaho Association of Educating Young Children brought forward a $6 million grant. It wasn't just the generalizations Representative Dorothy Moon claimed in a committee meeting. It was laden with critical race theory curriculum for our kids from infancy to pre-K. It was the specifics. There obviously was. I worked with one of those cohorts down in uh, Boise County, and I did see the curriculum that was being brought in, and, and it, was, um, it was very much CRT. When you hear that, what do you think? I was taken aback because I have no idea what she's referring to because she did not review any of our curriculum. She never came up here to review it. She did not request any of the materials. So I, I have no idea. And I called both the other school districts to ask if they had any contact with um, Representative Mood and Moon, and they said they had not either. And so, and they also said they aren't, they aren't including any CRT in their, in their curriculum also. According to the letter, you spoke with Representative Moon about this a while ago, or last year about this. Yes, during the last legislative session, um, I contacted her in February, prior to all of this actually coming up, just to see if she wanted to come on site and look through those items to see if she had you know, any concerns about what we were using. And she didn't? She did not. Okay, and have you heard from her since? No, I have not. We had a few, we had, I think, two conversations last spring and then some email exchanges where I sent her our strategic action plan, but she did not review any curriculum or any of those items. It was our strategic action plan and then a letter I had written about our program. Because if you were to go back and look at the hearing, you would probably see there was a lot of CRT materials that were being provided to these school districts. So it is there. This narrative of critical race theory, indoctrination, ideology being taught in our schools, when you hear something like that, especially being put on the record at a state house committee hearing, what do you think about that? I think it's a major distraction and disinformation. It's just, um, I, don't, I don't know what other purpose there is. You can, I think you could probably go in every single preschool in the whole state and you're not gonna find anything. You can go K through 12 and you're not gonna find anything. Um, so I think it's just a major distraction. It is hard to not take it personally. Um, we, we have had so much success with our with our preschool program. And we have been highlighted before about the success of our program. It's over 20 years old. It is a homegrown local program. And to hear that was just, it, it, our teachers are very upset because they feel like they're being accused of things that they are not doing. What is it gonna take? I, I, have we gotten to the point this year where people are saying, okay, we've been down that road. What's it gonna take to change this and, and focus on something that actually is happening? I would encourage people to talk with their local educators and talk with their schools and go and seek out information yourself. And any one of our parents can come in and have a conversation with us. If they want to look at the curriculum, I am happy to show them the curriculum. I would just encourage people to think about how they're being manipulated because um, I think they have to go to the source. We haven't had anybody. Not, not anybody that's come and asked for curriculum. Not one, he says. In the four years that he's been superintendent of the Basin School District, nobody has asked to see the curriculum from pre-K to 12th grade. And it's all there, all open and available to see. 
That grant money that Representative Moon so proudly pointed out was defeated by her chamber started out as a $3 million grant and is accepted back in 2020 by the Idaho legislature and put into use. Basin School District, with the oldest continuous community-supported preschool program in the state, used that original grant money to pay for parent workshops, to get them learning tools like puzzles and games, to help them work with their kids at home. Well, their share of the $6 million no curriculum strings attached grant would have been about $40,000, which they tell us would have helped cover tuition for pre-K education and help pay for more of those family resources. They say it will be a challenge to fund their program in the future without grant money. We tried again to ask Representative Moon some questions about her comments from earlier this week. We are still waiting to hear back.